even in the shade, it's friggin' hot. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. Got started planting feed. Or I should say Cameron got started planting feed. He uh, already planted everything out east town. Now he's out west town. When he gets done, though, we need the seed that's in the big bag over there, which means I need to get it into the seed tender. That, that took longer than it should have, but we're finally putting seed in. If you've never seen sorghum seed, that's what it looks like. Little tiny stuff. Seed tender's loaded. Waiting to hear from Cameron on whether he's going to need seed. It's freaking hot. Got the last of the bag feed in for Cameron. Don't know if it's enough. I might have to bring the seed tender down here for this little patch. I was told it's right at 10 acres. I don't know. We'll see. In other news though, it's friggin' hot. Way too hot. Okay, while we wait on a call from Cameron on where to take seed, I need to come check water. I know there's a lot of new people here. This is how we irrigate. 99% of our acres are irrigated with canal water. We have two small wells that irrigate some, but everything out here is canal water. So unlike, well it goes clear into the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, all of them have this giant aquifer underground called the Ogallala. They can tap into that and start pumping. You cannot do that in Colorado. One, the Ogallala doesn't make it far enough west to us. Two, there's so many rules and regulations on pumping and getting rights to pump and stuff. It just, it's different here. So our canal snakes back to the west 100 miles is where we separate from the Arkansas River. And we are on what is, can only be described as a 48 hour rotation. Meaning you get your water for 48 hours and it goes on to your neighbor and on to the next one. Once it gets to the end, it restarts. So right now, where we're in June, the snow is melting, the river's running high, we got a lot of water in the canal. It comes back very quick. Come July when we run out of snowpack, that's when things get interesting. That's why we can't just plant 100% corn because we don't have the water for it. So right now, it's our turn. We've got a lot of water coming out of this gate, that one right there, and one back over by the trees. We got three big ditches right here that we pull water out of, call them laterals. So this one is carrying water to four different farms. Now, I'm not gonna get into the math because good God, we'll all go to sleep. But a certain amount of water has to go through here in those 48 hours. So using all their fancy math, this is called a weir box. It's dead level, so that way the water goes through slow and then pulls it away, so that way it's not backing up in it. That staff gauge there, we know from all the math, in order to get our water out of this ditch, that has to be running on a certain number. We're actually running a touch low because it rained the other day. So that's how we know what to set these on. Now this lateral, literally right now, we were just right there. This one, as you can tell, has a lot more water in it. It's going to a lot more farms, but it has to run all that water through in the same 48 hours. So you have to have a lot bigger ditch to carry the water. Basic math, right? Okay, so this is that first ditch we looked at right over there a moment ago. This is what we call a divide. So this is the first farm pulling water off of this ditch. So this water is going underground and over to that pivot right there. Now we know how much water this farm owns, how much water is in the ditch combined. Using some more of that great math, we know exactly where that divide should be. Where am I pointing? Right there. You might be saying, why in the hell do you got a giant piece of board in there? Well, as you can see, water used to go that way. It doesn't anymore. So now you have to di divert more water over to make the percentages match up like they should be. Because essentially that's where the wall should be, is that edge of that board all the way up here to make all the water flow in the amount of space it should. That farm no longer pulls out of here because they put in a private head gate right next to the one up there actually. 
so they don't have to divert out of this ditch anymore. They've got their own head gate. So now around here, you got two types of irrigation once the water gets to your farm. You can flood irrigate, which is literally just that. You'll either use pipes or ditches and just push that water across the field or a center pivot. Center pivot is much nicer, but it's much more expensive. There's another irrigation style out there called drip irrigation. I don't know of anybody under our canal that has put that in. One, because we got a lot of sand in our water. All that drip tape underground, you need good clean water. And two, with the way our water system works and the heavy investment in drip, it just doesn't pencil out. Okay, we were just over there at that shed, at that divide. That water comes underground, and it's the further hydrant right there spewing water out. So what this is, this is our basin to where we charge our pivots. Because water going through a pivot has to be pumped in through it to pressurize it. The way we do that with our surface water is we'll first dump it into what we call a catch pond. See all that dirt piled up there? And right here? That's all sand that is filtered out of this water this year already. So what we have is this water will move through here real slow. It allows a lot of that sand to fall down and stick to the bottom. And we got another short one right here. Our newer ponds we were able to design a little bit different. We got bigger single catch ponds rather than a double like this. But either way, so that water goes through real slow, goes into the big pond, and over there are our pumps. So the water comes into the pond over there where we just were. We got these cylinders out here. On the inside of that cylinder, there is a hole in the middle of it. Letting that, there's just mesh screen around it to keep trash out. So that water falls down into that pipe, flows underground, right underneath these wells. Yeah, that's, that's not supposed to do that, and that's not supposed to do that. But that's got something stuck in it, and that's got a uh, shaft that's scarred up and won't seal off very good. So these wells right here go down uh, 15, 20 feet-ish, and just pressurize the whole system. So we have one well going to that pivot and that well going to that pivot. So this pond feeds two systems. Are you keeping up with me? Water can get complicated to say the least. Your other type of irrigation, flood. So this water comes, it, it's coming out of that bigger ditch we looked at earlier. Over there by them sheds in the distance is where it diverts, goes underground this whole mile, comes up right back there where the white line of pipe stops. And then you just got these little slide gates to control the flow, like so. So now this water will slowly flood its way across the field for irrigation. It is much less efficient than a pivot, but alfalfa, does much better under these conditions because this puts on a whole lot of water in one shot where your pivot you're putting on like an inch every pass essentially this is putting on several so this hay will grow for the next month really nice from one irrigation got pinchy over here getting the next field ready for cameron so colorado water law is set up in a way like our canal so today they called and said, hey, turn on those gates we were looking at. If we said, no, we, we don't want to run the water today, we lose that water. We don't get it back. We don't get to call them like a week later and say, hey, uh, you know that water from last week? We want it now. No, it's gone. It, neighbors already used it. That water's gone. Colorado water law is a use it or lose it state, meaning when it's your canal is supposed to run a certain amount of CFS, you either take it or you lose it. So we'll have times here in the summer where the snowpack is coming, so the river is running full. All of a sudden you'll get a thunderstorm come through here and you get a lot of guys saying, hey, turn the canal down. We're about to break the canal. We got too much water. Well, all the water we pass at our head gate during that is gone. We don't get it back. So what winds up happening in the month of June you are literally farming every acre of your farm because that water is running full, the canal is running full, you keep getting a lot of water really fast. You can only put so much water on your corn crop before you herd it. You can only put so much water on your alfalfa before you herd it. 
you start choking out them roots by putting saturating that soil for so long you will waterlog that crop and hurt its yield potential science so what we'll do is take this time and put forage sorghum a crop that requires very little moisture to make something harvestable the harvestable is a very broad term there but we will take water that we can't put on our corn right now we'll throw on that for a couple of days irrigate it up get a beautiful stand now all of a sudden you've got a cover crop established the soil ain't going anywhere and anytime you catch a rain that stuff will shoot up and then like a week later once your corn root zone has started to kind of dry down a little bit you can go back to irrigating corn now ideally i would love our canal to be able to put a percentage of our water in storage right now so come july when the snowpack is gone we would have more water in our storage to help supplement and get this crop to the finish line but that would be against the law in colorado again colorado water law man they got some weird rules well would you look at that and you go buy a lottery ticket first try that never happens normally it's about six tries for me but every state has its craziness when it comes to water rights. You can just get on TikTok or Instagram and just start searching Western water and good God, it never ends. Right now you got this well association in Idaho going nuts that they got cut off after they already planted their potatoes. But depending on which sources you listen to, you hear two different sides of the story. California, as we know, has been a mess forever. Oh, you got Arizona and Vegas and all them. Good God, stop. But that's why the saying goes back over 100 years when it comes to the West. Water's for fighting, whiskey's for drinking. I'm going to go stand in front of the uh, AC unit in the shop for a while while I wait on camera. I don't know if you've ever heard this turn of phrase, but uh, drive it till the wheels fall off. Cameron said challenge accepted. All well, the good news though, he already found it. I was just leaving to go help. The Thunderhead moving off to Kansas over there. Sent out a heck of a wind. Ugh, and a heck of a dirt storm. Look at how brown that is over there. Jesus. Huh. Yeah, 100 plus degrees and wind. It's a great combination. As for the drill, so it's not like the bearing went out or anything. The hub seems actually perfectly fine just off of a quick look at it. The dust cap on the end is missing. The wheel is usable but needs to be replaced. So right now, just waiting on a call back from Deer to see if they have any bolts in stock. Well, at least the dirt's mostly slowed down from blowing here other than one spot right there but man look at that wall of dirt out there just like the good old dirty 30s i don't want to do that again um for those of you who don't know we are the western edge of the dust bowl from the good old 30s and then random piece of trivia information we had less rain over a longer period of time than they did in the dirty 30s in the late 2000s, early teens. Yeah, 2012 and 13. That was, that was one of those where you'd go, are we, are we still gonna be in business at the end of this? All right, seed tender unhook, because obviously we're not putting any seed in. Just got a call back from Juan Deer. They don't have any bolts. I'm going to a softball tournament, <laughs> literally, on Crossbuster's doorstep, but we're kind of hoping to have all this planted, or the majority of this planted tomorrow before our rain chance. So, yeah. Making my way to town, thought I'd stop and check and see if I can spray some stuff tomorrow morning. So as you can see, this this field it's uh, it's getting overtaken. It gets sprayed bad. I only put two inches of water on it over a couple of weeks. I think we're okay here. So there's 40 acres I can knock off the to-do list. 
for right now, I don't even worry about that. I gotta hurry up and get to the ball fields. I'm actually going to one of my son's baseball games finally. I missed several throughout the season between the craziness of planting and harvest. And then I've had four that I had shit figured out to where I could go. And then mother nature just swooped in and said, nah, we're not playing today. And they haven't made up any of those. So, I don't know. Finally gonna make it to one though. That's all that matters. So with that being said, guys, baseball tonight, softball weekend. I'll see you when I see you.